So just how much will it cost you for someone to commission a 2,000 point painted Warhammer army, and what are the pros and cons of doing so? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're going to be talking about the tactics of getting lots of models on the table as quick as possible, with a few thoughts about the world of commission painting, the pros and cons of employing a painter to get your miniatures on the table faster, how the procedure might realistically work, and how much you might expect to pay for something like a 2000 point Warhammer army. Basically the idea of commission painting is if you employ someone to paint and perhaps assemble the miniatures for you, potentially getting a lot of models on the table a fair bit faster, and quite possibly with better quality than you might have time to manage yourself. It's certainly not for everyone, but it's an interesting little industry around Warhammer and miniature games in general. Games Workshop don't provide any sort of miniature painting service themselves, so there's certainly a gap in the market for people who want to commission custom armies, or just buy and play with pre-painted models, and there definitely are a fair few advantages to doing so. Obviously it's very much not for everyone, the main disadvantage being plenty of money as we'll get to, but there might be a few other reasons that might turn people off as well. Here are perhaps some of the main reasons why people might choose to use commission painters, and the biggest and most obvious one is the whole equation of time versus money. I think it's quite a rare thing for people in life in general to truly consider that they have enough free time to get all the hobbying done that they'd want to, though for some people time is absolutely the limiting factor to how much they can warhammer, and if you've only got a few hours to hobby each week around things like job, family and other commitments, for some people then forking over a bit of cash to get the painting speeded up could absolutely be a sensible move. I think there's a few different ways to look at the time saving, it means that you could get armies painted to play with a lot faster potentially. So say after a codex comes out, you're not waiting half a year for yourself to catch up with your painting backlog, by which time everything's changed anyway. It might also mean that you get to play with other armies or projects that you couldn't realise yourself otherwise. Say if you had a fair bit of disposable income, you really wanted to jump into, say, Eldar when all their new models dropped, but you can't really justify the amount of hobby time as you've already got a big project going on. It could allow you to play with another army and have multiple different options on game night maybe. Otherwise, plenty of people might go to them seeking better quality or nicer looking miniatures than they could make themselves. Most of the people who run these commission studios tend to be very talented painters. Often what some of these people could achieve in an hour might be significantly better than you could manage in twice that, though obviously that does depend on your own personal skill level. I think some people are attracted to commission painters just to have a really snazzy army that they can play with on the table, or often individual squads or units painted up as display pieces so they can have something absolutely gorgeous sitting on the shelf. Another motivation is for the people who just don't really enjoy the painting side of the hobby. I think the vast majority of people basically accept that the hobby is usually a balance between law, painting and gaming, and within that there are going to be those people who just really enjoy either the law or the game or both, and just see the painting and modelling side as a bit of a chore, perhaps appreciating the results that others get, but not really seeing it as something that they want to dedicate their time and effort to in something that's supposed to be relaxing. Again, if you do have the disposable income, then that could be a way to circumvent this, and it might be particularly motivational for armies that are a bit more of a grind to paint up. Some people really don't like painting big hordes of things, say a hundred orc boys or something, and there might well be those who just physically struggle to paint, maybe due to having hand tremors, being partially sighted, or another physical disability. Generally, it's going to be weighing up the financial investment against all of these conveniences, and I think that the whole commission painting thing often makes most sense for those really heavily invested in the hobby or having a lot of disposable income. For example, we often see content creators such as battle report channels commissioning armies, as of course they want something really cool to show off on their channels and some lovely looking pieces going head to head with each other. Kind of makes a lot more sense for them as they can see it as a business expense and still have quite a valuable asset that they could sell later. It might make a lot of sense for these top pro tournament players as well, who could justify the cost to have more options open to them. If you need to have the options of an army open to you to get the best rules, then it might make sense to outsource the painting to a studio and have it painted and magnetised to a basic tabletop level, so you can focus in excelling on the game. Otherwise, even for people maybe slightly less invested, say people who are very high earners outside of the hobby, I can imagine top business people or professionals often having a lot less time than they do money, which might make them some of the most likely to employ these services. So there's plenty of good reasons that these studios exist, though the vast majority of people don't make use of their services when they're playing Warhammer, perhaps primarily due to the cost involved. Plastic Warhammer kits are already seen as fairly luxury items and priced to match that. 
and you can certainly expect to be paying far more than kit price if you're going to have someone dedicate the hours to assembly and painting them for you. High prices are kind of understandable, you're paying both for the time and skill of the person painting them, but also the paints and materials that go into them, which is a significant cost, and then any shipping costs that you need on top of that, which might be fairly high if they go into the other side of the world. It just means that when the costs are considered, it's just not really a practical option, unless there's a luxury purchase for maybe a small amount of models that you want as a display piece. Warhammer's already a hobby that you need at least a fair bit of disposable income for, and if you're going to go down the commission painted route, you either need more disposable income, or you're going to have to accept that you're going to get less models out of it overall. Otherwise, there are a few other criticisms of getting models commission painted. A lot of people just don't like the idea in general, feeling that you might have a bit less ownership over your army if you haven't assembled and painted them yourself. I think that's perhaps the other main turn-off. There is something very satisfying about having an army that you've painted up yourself from scratch, and you've used your own talents to make it exactly the way that you like it. It'd be an issue for a lot of people, but certainly not for everyone. Otherwise, you might have a little bit of explaining to do if anyone gets very complimentary of your paint scheme. Most people who have bought painted armies have very little problem in explaining where they bought it from and recommending the talented people who did it, but in general you shouldn't be winning any painting prizes at events. And I've at least anecdotally heard of a few people passing off commissioned armies as their own handiwork, which is quite a good way to look like a jerk. Totally not an issue though for people not trying to take credit of things that they didn't do themselves. Otherwise, I guess if you're commissioning someone else to do an army, there's at least some chance that you're not going to be satisfied with the results for how much you've paid. In general, the vast majority of studios will typically want to make sure that this doesn't happen, as they've got reputations to maintain, but I feel like at least a certain percentage of people won't be too happy with the outcome, even if it is probably fairly low. There's always going to be an element of negotiation if you're paying a large amount of money for a very custom and bespoke service, particularly as you're likely asking a studio to produce something that they've never produced before to your own custom specifications. Finally, I think there is a segment of the community that looks down on commissioned armies. You might get a few snide comments from people who are being a bit elitist. I feel like everyone should invest their own time and efforts to realise their Warhammer army themselves. Again, I feel like this will be really quite rare. I think most adults these days understand that people can enjoy the hobby in different ways, and just because commission painting isn't for them doesn't mean that other people can't make use of it. I don't think you'd get too many people debating that playing against an awesome looking army adds to the experience, regardless of who happened to put the paint on it. For where to find these studios, there's a whole load of different ways that you can get hold of the people. Different countries in your local region will have more or fewer options depending on how prevalent Warhammer is there. Places like the USA and UK tend to be pretty well covered, and it does seem fairly commonplace for the bigger studios to ship internationally, though this will likely cost you a fair bit extra in some signed for and very safe postage fees. If it were me, probably the best place to start would just be a simple Google search. Just bong commission Warhammer painters into Google and you should come up with dozens of options, hopefully some at least in your local area. Otherwise, they'll generally have great presence in most social media and a few other commissioned art type sites. Most big studios tend to have a Facebook page. I've noticed Etsy has a fair few options that they usually tend to be on the cheaper end and people working a bit more ad hoc. I think there's a few options on Fiverr. There's even an r slash brush for hire on Reddit. And as well as these more formal things, often friends or people from hobby stores might offer a little bit of informal commission services. It's not too uncommon to hear people offering to paint their friends' miniatures for them, as much for the enjoyment as anything else. There's probably loads more that I'm missing, so feel free to mention down in the comments. In general though, I typically want to go for one with a good reputation myself. If you're going to be potentially spending a fair bit of money, I feel like I'd want to go with a bit more of an established operator with a decent amount of word of mouth feedback and reviews on their site. At least that way they should care a bit more about their reputations, and maybe give you a little less chance of getting burned. Once you've found a studio or commission painter, then comes the thorny issue of the price, and I would bear in mind that this can be very, very variable between the various different studios, and in fact the majority of them don't offer fixed rates that you can just read on their sites, but you need to approach them directly for a quote with exactly what models you want painting, and roughly what sort of detail. Even just within the confines of Warhammer, different miniatures can mean very different things. For those that do have set rates, they might even have different rates for things like standard space marines and bigger primaris, as they do take longer to paint. Most of the bigger places do also offer multiple different levels of painting, depending on whether you want something like three basic colours applied and a wash to the model, or if you're looking for a higher end job with better shading, highlights, and perhaps even fancier technique applied like freehand. Just to get a rough idea of rates, I looked at a whole bunch of different studios, 
and what sort of things you might expect to pay for a basic tabletop standard, maybe three or four simple colours applied, and maybe some basic details done like dry brushing, airbrushing or wash effects, things that can add some interesting depth to the model but really don't take much time to do. Just based on a very loose average, smaller infantry such as say Imperial Guardsmen or Tau Fire Warriors might cost £9, $12 US dollars, or €10, Euros. character models with their extra detail and level of care put in might be around three times this price, say £25, $32, €30 Euros perhaps, and maybe a standard sized vehicle, something like a Rhino or a Redemptor Dreadnought, that might cost you £45, $55 or €50. Euros. That is purely based on some rough estimates though, and would represent a fairly basic paint job. When you start looking beyond basics, again things can really vary a lot from place to place. In general very few places offer stock prices for higher end stuff, and usually you'll need a quote for that. Just anecdotally though, I'd expect to add somewhere between 50 and 100% to the prices above, depending on the studio and just how much extra quality they're offering. Finally, at the absolute high end of this spectrum is the display quality model market, say commissioning individual models painted to a golden demon standard, the sort of thing that could be credibly entered into painting competitions and expect to do okay. With this sort of market, the sky's kind of the limit. Often people tend to want this sort of quality on slightly bigger miniatures, maybe vehicles or large characters perhaps, and individual models could cost hundreds of pounds or over a thousand. You will be commissioning people that have skills that not a lot of people possess, and they might be putting three or four days work into just one single model project, so it's really not too surprising that this is going to cost significant amounts. Just sizing this up very roughly, if you did want to, say, get a Space Marine army commissioned, then here's one loose example of a slightly low model count Ultramarines army, a few HQs, a bunch of infantry squads, and five Walker-style vehicles. As Space Marines go, it's at least a fairly reasonable competitive choice at the moment, and a lower model count could certainly be an advantage both from buying the models and paying to have them painted up. Sizing up the model cost, these figures aren't absolutely exact, but they're pretty close. It'd be £420 for your three HQs, four boxes of squads, and five vehicles, and that would translate to US$680 or €550, Euros, at least at Games Workshop's marked up prices overseas. You could maybe save a little bit on the cost of the models if you got them through discounters, maybe offering something like 20% off like Element Games do here in the UK, which I do have a link for in the video description if you're interested. In any case though, once you've bought these from Games Workshop, say you wanted these painted up, if we just went by the very rough basic entry painting rates over on the other page, that'd be 3 characters, 26 infantry models and 5 vehicles, so perhaps you could expect something in the region of just over £500, almost $700 or around €600. Euros. Very roughly speaking, it's around double the cost of the models. Interesting that the commission painting is relatively better value compared with Games Workshop's models costs in the US, just because Games Workshop charges so much more for them. In reality, it could even be a little bit higher than this, as a few of those infantry models are fairly chunky, like the Eradicators and the Blade Guard, and often places charge a little bit more for those kind of models as opposed to basic infantry. If you did want them painted to a high tabletop quality, with things like edge highlighting and fancier details on, you might expect something like £750 to a grand, maybe a thousand to thirteen hundred US dollars, or somewhere around nine hundred to twelve hundred euros. Again, all estimates. I'm sure some places will do cheaper than that. Otherwise, besides the price, there's a few other practicalities of getting things commissioned, particularly if you're looking to put in a big order, something like an entire army. Ideally, you need to have some way of making sure that the quality is what you want. I guess one way of doing so could be to commission a character or a small squad. If that works and you're happy with it, then you could go on to a bigger deal. In general though, if you do just skip to a really big order from a studio, then a lot of them tend to send you photos of the first few models or some work in progress shots, just to make sure that the collector is happy with the colour scheme and finish before it's rolled out over an entire army. A lot of places expect deposits for bigger projects, again kind of understandable, as the painter needs protection against the buyer just turning around and bailing and not paying up. You might be stuck with a fancy custom army that not a lot of people necessarily want. It seems common practice to ask something between 20 or 50% up front and the rest on completion. Another negotiating point can be deadlines as well. Obviously the more that you commission from one person, the longer it's going to take. Depending on how free the artist is, then it could take literally days or weeks. But painting up a big army to a high standard could certainly take a month or two. Again, when you have the initial negotiations about the quote, they'll typically say how long it's going to take and a rough deadline that they'll try and work to, 
to ensure that you're getting the things that you paid for in a somewhat reasonable time. Overall, I think that getting Warhammer Armies commissioned is really quite interesting, though it would be something that only appeals to really quite a niche part of the hobby. I'm sure at least a few people would think it would be an amazing job just to be sitting around painting miniatures all day, but I certainly can see why they need to charge the prices that they do. It seems like there could be a fair bit of uncertainty if you did this as your main thing as opposed to a side hustle. You both need the talent to paint in the first place and motivation to paint fast and well. You need to get very good at using time-saving techniques such as airbrushes, washes and dry brushes. Even basic colour schemes take a fair bit of time to realise and the money that you're being paid doesn't even just cover the time invested as you have to pay for all the paints and things, which will be quite a significant cost. Work might be inconsistent, either getting overloaded with too many commissions at one point and having to turn people away, or having times when there's a bit of a lull and you don't have enough customers coming forward. And as I mentioned before, I think it could be a bit tricky managing customers sometimes. People are going to be paying a lot of money for a very custom thing, and they might well have their own unexpected expectations or hang-ups that you just might not expect and not anticipate. I can imagine it being a pretty annoying and unpleasant situation if you wind up with someone who's really not happy about the work that they've received. There are plenty of people who have made videos about this though from the commission painter's perspective. There's plenty of people who talk about their experiences and techniques if you just do a simple YouTube search. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of discussion around commission painting in Warhammer 40k. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and experience down in the comments. I'd certainly be interested in hearing anyone's experience with artists they've commissioned, particularly what drove you to do so, and how do the results turn out. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k discussion coming. I do tend to have new videos out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Making all this 40k stuff does take a lot of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.